Hello, welcome to Chem Camp. I'm Mrs. Newman, and I've got an AP Chem multiple choice question to help students prepare for their May exam. This problem has to do with what's called a particulate diagram. And these pictures are a favorite of the College Board on their multiple choice section of the exam. So let's learn a little chemistry. The problem reads, which of the following particulate diagrams best shows the formation of water vapor from hydrogen gas and oxygen gas in a rigid container at 125 degrees Celsius? Well, anytime I have a chemical reaction involving one of these particulate diagrams, the very first thing that I want to do is write out a balanced chemical equation. So. Let's start there. We're starting with two gases, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. What you have to remember about these two particular gaseous molecules, though, is they're diatomic molecules, meaning when you write them, you have to write them H2 plus O2. And they're going to form a little bit of water vapor, H2O gas. Not only that, but we got to make sure that equation is balanced. So if we take a look, we've got two hydrogen atoms on the reactant side and two hydrogen atoms on the product side. The oxygen atoms, however, on the reactant side, we have two, but only one oxygen atom on the product side. So I'm going to go ahead and put a coefficient of two out in front of the H2O. This t goes ahead and balances those oxygen atoms out, but now we've got 2 times 2, which is 4 hydrogen atoms on the product side. So to balance this, I'm going to put a 2 in front of the H2 on the reactant side. And now I've got a balanced chemical equation. And from this balanced chemical equation, we're going to pull a plethora of information to answer our question. And the very first piece of information that we can pull we've already discussed. And it's the fact that the H2 and the O2 are those diatomic molecules. Meaning that they come in a pair of two atoms. So when they're drawn in a particulate diagram, there has to be two atoms drawn. So if you take a look at options A and B here on the reactant side, they only have single atoms drawn in that reaction container. So we can go ahead and rule out A and B because there's no diatomics drawn there. Helps if I spell it correctly though. So let's continue discussing our balanced equation here, so that way we can choose between C and D. From here, we need to think about the sizes of the atoms, because they're going to be drawn to scale in these particulate diagrams. And our atomic radius trend is going to tell us that the oxygen atom is actually the bigger molecule. Well, the hydrogen atom should be the smaller molecule. The other piece of information that becomes really important here is our balancing of those atoms in the equation. Because if we take a look at our mole ratio, we need two times or twice as many of those hydrogen molecules than the oxygen ones. So two times the little guy. So let's take a look at the options they give us in C and D. In C, in D, let's start with D. They've got the s smaller at, uh, molecules, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of those smaller diatomics. So we've got six H2s, and we've got one, two, three, four, 
five, six, O oh twos. And they show us forming one, two, three, four, five, six H2Os. Well here, once we've counted up those molecules, although they have diatomics drawn on the reactant side, the ratio of those particular molecules is incorrect. So it's not D. Let's check C. C again, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six of those H2s plus one, two, three of the O2s. So that ratio is correct because we have twice as many of the H2s than we do the O2s. And we actually form one, two, three, four, five, six molecules of H2O, which is also the correct ratio because a six uh, 2 to 2 mole ratio from our balanced equation between the hydrogen and the water is essentially a 1 to 1 mole ratio. So letter C is our answer. I hope this helps you with your particulate diagrams. Continue to follow along for more AP Chem content. See you soon!